So when Sue and I booked this particular RV park so that we could be right next to the U.S. Space and Rocket Center, somehow when we were looking at the website, we missed the fact that you can in fact sign your kids up for a space camp here. That is multiple days where they are immersed at age appropriate levels in real life adventures of learning to become an astronaut. Turns out that many astronauts started their career here and ended up being real space shuttle uh, astronauts later in life. Now we did have a few things that popped up when we were here. It's a full hookup 30 amp place. We had a little problem with a lot of different uh, birds pecking away and we had a couple of branches of fall down and we kind of chronicled that in the video prior to this one. So if you're interested to see some of the things that uh, happened while you're in our veer. But as I dive into this satellite view of this place, you'll see how close it is to the highway here. And you can just uh, duck uh, off on the off ramp, go immediately into the RV park and I'll show in a second here, we were parked off to the right uh, next to the trees there, right where I had my cursor there. And to go visit the Rocket Center, literally you drive out the front, go literally maybe a third or a quarter of a block and you're right into the parking lot of the whole shooting match. Now, we did not know about that second building there that uh, was to the left of the rocket when it was being displayed there. We thought it was just a big building that's obvious when you're in the parking lot. And we spent a lot of time immersed in that particular museum. But when we went outside to look at all the outside displays, we were kind of blown away by the size of that existing building that we hadn't done yet. And you want to make sure you do that one because that's got a giant Saturn V rocket in it and all sorts of engine displays and it's just mind blowing. Watch you come along with Sue and I. We'll uh, show you some of the displays and things that you can uh, look forward to with your kids and put this place on your map, Huntsville, Alabama. got construction going on here and we are at the uh, Space and Rocket Center and obviously this is where we're going. Mark, 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 come on. This way. Oh my god. You can hear some uh, noise here. They've got a space shuttle and they're working on it right now. There was a time, that's the SR-71 Blackbird, I believe. I didn't read it yet, but it, you know, it's a pretty obvious looking plane. There was a time that you couldn't get within oh, yeah. 15, 20 miles of that if you were a civilian. And if you were, they'd probably either slap you silly or throw you in jail or something. This museum has tons of things for kids and healthy adults to participate in that'll fling you around and make you go upside down and test your agility. But uh, this was more my speed, sitting in a chair with a set of 3D Oculus glasses on. And I'm telling you, it was the best 11 bucks I ever spent. The two things that you'll see on the screen in the background that we were looking at here, I'm looking at the inside of the shuttle cockpit as I'm flying it. And Sue is down at ground level on a rocket launch. What was kind of uh, amazing and fun was how quickly this museum just catapulted you 
into the environment that you were going to be in for the next few hours if you choose and for us it was a half a day or more uh, learning about everything space. Directly after this was a lengthy movie that prepared you additionally for free for other things you were going to be seeing and in particular uh, they talked about all of the different generations of the spacesuits as the space program progressed. So here's a model that shows the space shuttle main engines here on the bottom. And if we quickly walk over to the engineering drawing from Pratt and Whitney way back in the day, and you look at this mess of showing the flow of all of the different fluids and gases and things that have to happen until it ultimately comes out of the nozzle here. And you go, them darn engineers, okay, because this is the uh, block diagram, the flight configuration, and when they're all done, it's obvious you build one of these and uh, it'll get the job done for you. So this actually, what we're looking at ahead, is live feed of where they are, their clock, huh. ah, they get haircuts there. The next time you complain about your black and gray tank on your RV, I want you to look at this. Look at this fancy equipment. This is all like stainless steel and aluminum tanks. All of this stuff recycles the urine and turns it back into water on the space shuttle. And then, when you want to go to the bathroom, you need this solid canister that's actually going to store the solids. You've got this giant control panel here. And when you're going to go to the bathroom, you have to use this and turn it on. And you can kind of figure out what you do with it. This is for liquid waste. And if you've got to go number two, you open the toilet seat, you put a bag in here, you sit down on here, you turn the fan and the control on that provides a negative suction, and you go into the bag, and then when you're done, you push the bag down into this thing and they capture it. And I'm thinking, when they're done, they take the contents of this out and they throw it out in space. And one of the ladies that's given a tour here says that if you've ever seen a shooting star, it might actually be some space waste like that going into the atmosphere, which is a little depressing for me because one of the stories that I always tell Sue is that when we first met on one of our first dates and I'm driving in the car and a shooting star went by and I went to myself, I hope the date goes well and I hope we fall in love. So we did, and hopefully it's not because I saw a big pile of space poop fly through the air and provide me with the incentive to fall in love. Uh, so you strap yourself into this sleeping bag here, and the bungee cords keep you from flying around, and then you can watch some O-Gym on yeah. YouTube right here before you go to there bed. Go. So it, it doesn't get you any better than that. have your snacks and candies yeah. um, velcroed up to the wall. Yep. They, they have people that sign up for this that are, you know, they're young and it's still, you know, uh, relatively playtime, but I mean, it's approaching some level of wow, seriousness. Um, and this is actually yeah. where they're doing it. You can see the... Right, you can see they have a, a CM uh, zip hoist up and there. And they've got the harnesses down yeah. here where they lay. They're floating up there. And 
boy, I'm telling you, by the time you get done with this camp, if you've got the brains to be an astronaut and you've got the physical uh, abilities to do this, this place will whet your appetite, something fierce. And we did walk by a couple of displays there where it showed the different astronauts that actually did make it onto the shuttle that started in the space oh, camp here. I miss that. Yeah. You can read this explanation about the space shuttle tires here, but the real point that you should take away for your motorhome is that something as important as the space shuttle, when they finally figured out what the heck they're going to do, look who they bought them from. Oh wow, look at that. Well we think we did everything on the inside, and now look at how fantastic this is on the outside. Why are you going to that cable? We're looking at rockets you know, here. When you start the, with the alphabet, you start with A. And when you start looking at something like this, you start with what's holding it up. <laughs> there it is. There he goes. Can't help himself. Unfortunately, it's very noisy here. They're doing some sandblasting on a shuttle over there. You know how that goes when you're doing that. You're working around the yard one day and you go, you know what? I got to uh, shot peen my uh, shuttle tank. But at any rate, I want to show Numar and uh, Tiffin and Integra. They should look at the slide mechanism on here, which is pretty freaking sturdy, and somehow incorporate some of the things that they did here and it would take away some of the problems that they have on their slide mechanism. Check out the cross section here. It's kind of why Prevo doesn't have any problems with slides. So just like when we were at the Don Garlitz Museum and they had pictures of the 10,000 and 6,000 horsepower motors that were in the dragsters, you'll notice that they got one of the motors over there from here over there. Let's take a look at it. saw the engineering section of the show, you'll see that weld mint up there with the tabs that you can put a pin through. It's got four legs, it's holding on in a motor, and then it's got two, two ears with a hole that you can put a pin. So this engine, when it's mounted, it's mounted inside, and let's say the jet is my feet, and there's cylinders that are mounted to that weldment that I uh, pointed out, and it and these cylinders can tip the whole engine to be able to keep the rocket upright. It starts going one way, and the engines are tilting one way, and that's how you steer the engines, and the engines are constantly pushing different directions so that the rocket can go straight up. And if you don't think that this thing is awesome, look at how much fuel it uses. This thing used 2,000 gallons of liquid oxygen and 1,350 gallons of kerosene oh, per second. second. Oh and so they God. had to carry around 150 times that amount to run that one engine. And remember, one, yeah. two, three, four, five. So there's the steering mechanism that I was talking about, the uh, kind of tripod that's connected to the engine, and the output of the engine, which is kind of like a cone. I just have to say, this building is so huge with so much in it. A lot of uh, hands-on things too, to this one's all about the weight of thrust. We've got the balance act over here with your um, thrust and your payload. Is that what it is? Yeah, weight versus thrust.
you look at this circuit board here and realize that how tiny this would be. This would be like a little piece of dandruff now with all this equipment on it. But here's the real corker. This is drum data storage. It's a drum data storage unit. Okay, magnetic drum data storage. God only knows how big it is. I don't know if it says it on this uh, tag here. But you look at this and imagine how unreliable it is with a chain drive in it with a little chain going sideways on a sprocket with a spring there. And oh yeah, it's inside of a rocket bouncing around. I graduated from engineering school in 75, but yet I can remember working in offices like this with drafting boards that weren't too much fancier than what you see here. So you look at this H1, the first engine, America's new champion here, and you look way inside of this thing, and you look at that plate way in the back, and you see all those little holes in there, and you can just visualize all sorts of liquid oxygen and the fuel mixing coming out of there and it's just one giant inferno. I'm thinking one of today's pro tips is going to be if you're thinking about someday holding out to go to the moon or to go to Mars for a little jaunt you might want to rethink that and wait for ultra reliability is just look at the gadgetry that you need to get you there the way they're set up right now it doesn't look like it's a safe trip looks like they actually have a special conferences going on here too and dinners. It's a pretty nice setup. Maybe some kind of presentation or award, who knows. Yeah. I'm sorry Sue, I I'll be on a mission for a while, so you'll have to find somebody to run the Dutch Star, you could possibly uh, contact uh, Jerry, I'm sure Jerry would, would help, or maybe even Paul. Hi, right. see ya. We'll miss you. I've got work to do, I've got work to do, I've, I've got to work on the Hubble. See ya.